I just got the most powerful Bitcoin miner you can buy right now. Latest generation, let's go. The Amp Miner S19 XP, it's air-cooled, it's very loud, it's even louder than the previous generation of Bitmain Amp Miner S19s. Again, this is the XP we're dealing with. It has black fan shrouds, which is an exciting development for this miner, and just, just listen. It's very loud, it's very annoying but it's the most profitable Bitcoin miner you can buy right now without using water cooling. If you wanna get the best Bitcoin miner, let's break down if this is the one you should buy or why not. My name is Vosk, you're on the Vosk on YouTube channel. I'm not here to push Bitcoin mining or crypto or this model on you or anything like that. I don't have a relationship with Bitmain. Um, actually, I really dislike Bitmain, the manufacturer. I think they're kind of a, a bad company overall, but their miners historically have been good and oftentimes best in class. So I'm not gonna go over the bare bones basics. We have an electricity guide and setup guide that covers generally all ASIC miners, which is what this is. It's an application specific integrated circuit miner. This is a purpose built machine. It mines cryptocurrency, specifically one cryptocurrency mining algorithm. That's gonna be SHA-256, which is the Bitcoin mining algorithm. And uh, yeah, it takes two uh, power connections and one ethernet connection. It doesn't support Wi-Fi. You plug in a C13, C14 cable to your PDU, or you can look at another solution, log in remotely, and you're off to the, the races with it. Let me show you that exactly just real quick, right? So this is the IP address for it. It'll vary, you know, this is randomly generated on my local network here. Uh, and I did turn it off yesterday because uh, I was cleaning the garage. But I've got full days of data. I've had this for about a week now or so. I've tried it on a couple of different pools and all that kind of stuff. And it, it's been performing well so far, which is great to see. And, you know, it, it matches the track record with these ant miners. They've been doing this for almost a decade now, which is kind of crazy. This is a very powerful Bitcoin miner. The most powerful yet, really, especially it's going to be produced in volume and available for sale in quantities of one. Look at that hash rate, 143,000 giga hash a second, or basically 143 tera hash a second. It is power hungry, but not all that crazy compared to previous generations. It consumes about 11 amps or 3000 watts. And again, let's remind you one more time, this thing is loud. And there's something about the whine the pitch of these fans it's the most annoying ant miner i've ever had and one of the most annoying just mining rigs i've ever had and other people are mad about bitcoin mining too so i'll get back to the review i've got timestamps down below you can skip this part if you want but this is just kind of a fun news article to kind of tie in here but bitcoin mining is drowning out the sound of niagara falls a haunting hum they say I give four hours of sleep, maybe because of that constant noise. I can hear the noise even through the storm windows. Once, Jeremy could hear the sound of Niagara Falls, but now over three kilometers away from his back garden, it's just the whirring sound of a Bitcoin plant. It's like having a toothache for 24 hours a day, every day, Max says. The noise pollution of this industry is like nothing else that has been there, Robert says. The Niagara Falls mayor. And uh, Mining Farm says they're working on it, conducting acoustic studies, plans drawn for a larger noise abatement wall, got some plastic up. Yeah, Niagara Falls, if you're unfamiliar with it, it's a big waterfall and it's a little tourist site and you get soaked when you go and check it out. But look, look how happy this kid is. You could be that happy if you go to Niagara Falls, but you're not gonna be that happy, okay? Here in Bitcoin miners. And uh, yeah, Bitcoin mining is getting tougher across the board throughout the world. Bitcoin miner Iris Energy faces a default claim on 103 million of equipment loans. Mining's getting tough and there's two ways to look at this. Um, why would I get into Bitcoin mining right now? 
or a lot of these big Bitcoin miners are overextended, over leveraged, and they're all about to implode, which could make mining better for the medium and small guys like us, or at least like me. So let's check out the earnings. Last 24 hours earned this much a Bitcoin. You can see the S19 XP one day average 143. Uh, terahash a second bringing my earnings we'll take uh we'll just take this number uh four five eight four four and uh so with that this thing is earning me right now and you know numbers vary check the latest things if you want uh but about nine dollars a day how much does it burn up in electricity i'm going to run through that here in a second but i do want to thank badgerland who has been an active member on the voscoin talk forum this isn't an endorsement or recommendation it's just simply credit for helping us continue to make content here on youtube and other platforms trying to review all the latest and greatest miners. It's it's very difficult to get all these things timely. It's expensive, but I can tell you I did personally KYC him and have that on record. And again, it's not an endorsement, but that's the level we are going these days to try to make sure that we don't work with anyone who's basically gonna do a bad job. Uh, so he's dealt with multiple members on the forum over the last year. He's been an active community member, stuff like that. But yeah, he, he's an ASIC miner reseller, Badgerland Crypto. He's the one who sourced us and sent us the S19 XP to review, which is specifically the S19 XP 141 Terash the second model, which he has listed at $7,000. So if you want to support someone who supported the channel, I'll drop that link out down below. But also, let's talk about direct from the manufacturer. So you wanna go direct from Bitmain, you can buy right now for $6,500. Shipping date is supposed to be pretty soon when you're looking at S19 XPs, make sure you're looking at the 141 terahash second model and not the 127 terahash a model unless you run the numbers and you know you prefer to take that model. Keep in mind, when you import miners from overseas, especially into the US, you're gonna get hit with a 30% tariff. So this is actually going to turn out to be more than $7,000 for you. Again, not trying to push you one way or the other, just want you to understand that, but I don't wanna vouch for them. Confirm the tariffs and run all the numbers and make sure this works for you in your location, including the US, because where these things are coming from, you know, distributors and logistics, supply chain, everyone's got an excuse still these days. So just double check, make sure you know exactly what you're getting and at what price point. The network difficulty, basically how hard it is to mine Bitcoin has gone down for the first time in a long time, but it's so little you can barely tell. But yes, we have slightly moved back from an all time high in Bitcoin mining network difficulty, which translates directly to more people trying to eat the same Bitcoin pie and thus just less Bitcoin mining profitability. Bitcoin mining difficulty barely adjusts downward by 0.20% as miner pressure continues. Keep in mind we are about 500 days away from the next Bitcoin halving. If nothing changes, Bitcoin mining profitability whoosh, will be cut in half. So basically as it stands, Bitcoin mining is tougher than it's ever been. There's a newer generation of miners that are coming into the play or coming into the fray. The takeaway with this is that a new miner is more efficient. A, a more efficient miner pushes older miners into just being less profitable. More people, more big companies mining than ever before, more hash rate than ever before. It's more difficult, literally, pretty much than ever before. We're down point, you know, 20%. Uh, more difficult ever to mine a Bitcoin. I honestly think it's less advisable than ever for the average person at home to get into Bitcoin mining. You have to spend a couple hundred bucks on electricity and associated hardware to run this properly and safely in your home. These things only run a 220, 240 volt, right? You know, industrial electricity, or you run two legs of 120 and you get a 240 volt. Like for example, your dryer probably runs off that if you're familiar with that real basic crash course. Uh, the fact is you're gonna have to invest in your electricity infrastructure, even in your home, okay? And uh, again, I cover all that in the tutorial videos in, in detail, but you gotta set up costs. You can't just plug it into some outlet in your house. And prices continue to trend down and it's only gonna get worse in the short term, in my opinion. Having's coming. I hate to be a downer, but like kind of more than ever, it begs the question, why not just buy the coin if you believe in it? If you operate as a business, if you've got some gains to offset, you know, consult a professional tax advisor and all that kind of stuff on that front, 
um, it could still be a very lucrative play in a diversification, but it's just kind of worse than it's ever been. And I hate to say that, and I hate to sound negative, but I'm never here to mislead you guys. Uh, so I think there's still some bright opportunities for altcoin mining, but Bitcoin mining is an industrial grade game now. Unless you get an edge with like pay, getting solar and paying it off or just super cheap electricity, you know, it's, it's very tough because when you round out this profitability, right? So I talked about making about nine bucks a day. It's supposed to make about 10 bucks a day, but at 10 cents per kilowatt hour, I'm, I'm eating up $7 and 22 cents a day in electricity. So I'm only pulling not even three bucks. So let's just take the profit, forget about the expenses. All right, we got three times 365. Over the next year, I'll make $1,100. And let's just say we kept up at that rate for two years. So now I've got $2,200, okay? And then let's say that I hold all the Bitcoin and it triples. So if I mine for two years and all the Bitcoin I mine triples, I basically only pay the device off at a residential, a good residential electric rate in this era. That's a situation that's tough, but if you've got a cheaper electricity rate, you know, this is a very different figure and you could have two, three times these earnings easily. So that's the situation. It, it hurts when you're earning over $3,500 a year and over $2,600 are going to the electricity bill. I'm not here to enrich electricity companies. I'm trying to support the Bitcoin network, earn some passive income with the coins along the way. That's the situation, for better and worse, but it's time for me to go play with the CBO. That's gonna be our chief Bitcoin officer, the cutest, the fluffiest, the tailsiest, our little uh, Dogecoin here. Thanks so much for watching. Again, I'm Boss here on the Bosscoin YouTube channel. Please subscribe. We're chasing a million subscribers and uh, we got a long way to go. <laughs> so I'll see you on the next one.